Hey everyone, welcome back. Ready to dive into some seriously cool research? Absolutely, always up for a deep dive. Today we're looking at feline anatomy. Oh, nice. Specifically, cat spines. Sounds a little uh, intricate. It is, but trust me, this research is fascinating. It has some surprising implications for how we understand our feline friend's health. I'm intrigued. So, the source material for today is a brand new study. It was just published in Veterinary Sciences in September 2024. Okay, fresh off the press. Yeah, get this. It's the first study ever to comprehensively map out the dimensions of the feline vertebral canal. That's the bony channel that houses the spinal cord. Hmm. That's pretty important real estate in there. Right. And they didn't stop there. They also measured the intervertebral disc widths all the way from the first thoracic vertebra, TH1, okay. to the first sacral vertebra, or S1. Wow. So a complete roadmap of a cat's spine. Why is this kind of detailed information so important? Well, I'm going to let our expert take this one. Why is it so important to understand the normal dimensions of a cat's spinal canal? Well, you have to think about what that canal does. It's basically a protective tunnel for the spinal cord, right? Right. In the spinal cord. That's mission control for nerve signals going throughout the body. So if that tunnel gets too narrow in certain spots, it can put pressure on the spinal cord. Ooh, not good. Yeah, that's when you start seeing problems like pain, mobility issues, even paralysis in severe cases. So a healthy spine equals a happy cat. Got it. Hmm. But why are we just now getting this detailed information? This seems like pretty basic anatomy. It's harder than you think to get these precise measurements. Imagine trying to get a cat to hold still for a detailed spinal scan. Huh, right. Good luck with that. This study used 50 European short hair cats, all ethically sourced, of course. 50 cats? That's a lot of spines to measure. It is. They used advanced imaging techniques to get these incredibly detailed anatomical maps. So can you break down what the researchers were specifically measuring? Sure. They had three main measurements. First was the interpedicular diameter, or ID for short. ID. This tells us the width of the canal at its base. Then there's the mid-sagittal diameter. That's the SD. Okay, ID and SD. Got it. The SD measures the height of the canal. And finally, they measured the intervertebral disc width, IVDW. The IVDW. That's the space between each vertebra. And they documented all these measurements for every vertebra from TH1 to S1. Wow. Meticulous. Did anything in these measurements jump out at the researchers? Any surprises? Yeah, actually, there were some interesting findings. One of the big ones was identifying specific points where the cat's spinal canal naturally narrows. Hmm, interesting. So these are kind of like pinch points in the spinal canal. Exactly. And these narrowing points, or stenosis, can make cats more vulnerable to spinal cord compression in those areas. Okay, so where are these pinch points located? The most pronounced narrowing was at the transition from the fifth lumbar vertebra, L5, okay. to the first sacral vertebra, S1. Ah, so right where the lower back meets the tailbone. Yeah, that's the lumbosacral junction. You can imagine how any compression there would cause some serious discomfort. Absolutely. Any other areas of concern? They also found some narrowing higher up in the thoracic spine, oh. specifically between vertebrae TH1 and TH4. Mm-hmm then between TH6 and TH7, and again between TH11 and TH13. These spots are particularly interesting because they give us clues about why some cats might be predisposed to certain types of spinal problems. Hmm. So knowing where these narrow points are could help vets diagnose and treat back problems in cats more effectively. Exactly. And it might help us understand why certain breeds are more prone to certain spinal conditions too. Like breeds with longer spines or unusual spinal conformations. Exactly. It opens up a whole new area of research. Fascinating. Now, we've talked about where the canal narrows, but it can't all be bad news. There must be some wider parts too, right? Of course. Just like in us, the cat's spinal cord isn't the same width all the way down. It has enlargements in certain areas where there's a greater concentration of nerves for controlling the limbs. Makes sense. So more nerves equal more space. You got it. Yeah. The widest points of the feline spinal canal match up perfectly with the cervical and lumbar enlargements, which is exactly what you'd expect. Right. Give those important nerves some breathing room. Yep. It's all about optimal nerve function. The authors of the study actually highlighted this in figure one of their paper. If you look at a median cut of the cat spine, you can really see those enlargements and how the canal widens to accommodate them. It's all making sense now. What about those intervertebral discs? Any surprises there? Well, the IVDW, that disc width, 
stays pretty consistent in the upper spine. But then as you move down towards the thoracolumbar junction, it starts to increase. Mm -hmm. And then it really peaks at the lumbosacral junction between L7 and S1. They even have a cool visual representation of this. In figure 5B, you can see how those lower discs are significantly wider. Wait a minute. Wider discs in an area where the canal narrows? Yeah. Doesn't that seem like a recipe for trouble? You're right. It does raise some concerns. That finding suggests cats might be more susceptible to disc herniations in the lumbosacral region. You've got those larger discs in a relatively confined space. Okay, so cats have these potential problem areas in their spines, just like dogs. But we always hear about dogs having back problems. Are cats just built differently? That's a great question, and actually one that the researchers were curious about, too. Interestingly, both cats and dogs can have that lumbosacral stenosis, that narrowing we talked about. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Cats seem to have fewer problems from it. Really? Yeah, possibly because of how their spinal nerve roots are positioned. So even though they have a similar narrowing, it doesn't seem to bug them as much as it does dogs. It seems that way. The researchers think it might have something to do with something called relative stenosis. Relative stenosis. Okay, I'm lost. So you have absolute stenosis where the canal is just straight up too narrow and it's pressing on the spinal cord. Then there's relative stenosis where there's less space, but it might not be a problem unless something else happens, like a disc bulge. Cats might have less of that relative stenosis, which gives their spinal cords a bit more wiggle room. So they have a little more built-in protection. You could say that. But even with that extra space, problems can still happen, especially if those intervertebral discs start acting up. So cats have these potential problem areas in their spines, just like dogs. But we always hear about dogs having back problems. Are cats just built differently? Yeah, that's a great question. What does all of this mean for us cat owners? Well, I think this study really highlights the importance of early detection. Even though cats are really good at hiding pain, there are some subtle signs we can watch for. Okay, like what? My cat is basically a ninja when it comes to disguising any kind of discomfort. Think about changes in their normal behavior. Uh -huh. Like if your cat suddenly doesn't want to jump up on things like they used to, mm -hmm. or they're not as playful, could be a sign of back pain. Okay. Same thing with any changes in their litter box habits. Like what? Like if they're straining to go or if they start having accidents outside the box, those could be signs of a spinal issue. So basically any change in their routine, especially when it comes to moving around or using the litter box, yeah, could be a red flag. Exactly. It's all about paying attention to those little changes and not just brushing them off as them getting older. Cats are tough, but they can't hide pain forever. So if we do notice something off, what should we do? Go straight to the vet. Absolutely. Early intervention is key when it comes to spinal problems. The sooner you catch it, the better the chances of successful treatment and, you know, preventing long-term damage. This is all making a lot of sense now. We're not just talking about numbers and measurements. This is about their quality of life. Exactly. And this research gives vets a much better understanding of feline spinal anatomy, mm -hmm. which means more accurate diagnoses and more tailored treatment plans. Makes sense. Speaking of treatment, the study authors mentioned the need for more research. What specifically did they highlight? They really want to look more into how things like age, sex, and breed might affect these spinal dimensions. This is where things get really exciting, because it could open the door to personalized medicine for cats. Personalized medicine for cats. Wow. Imagine being able to tailor preventative care and treatments based on an individual cat's risk factors. So, for instance, if you know certain breeds are more prone to that lumbosacral stenosis, right. breeders could use that information to make better decisions about breeding practices, right? Yeah. And vets could recommend certain exercises or lifestyle changes to help prevent problems in the first place. It's like having a crystal ball for your cat's spinal health. Kind of, yeah. The more we understand about these subtle variations in their anatomy, the better we can care for them. So we've covered the findings the relevance for cat owners, and what future research might look like. What are some of the key takeaways you want listeners to remember from this deep dive? I think the biggest takeaway is awareness. Just knowing that cats can have these spinal issues, mm -hmm. even if they're not as common as in dogs, it's empowering, right? Yeah. Owners can be more proactive about their cat's health. Pay attention to those subtle signs. Don't just assume it's old age. And if you see something unusual, get to the vet. 
great advice. And if listeners want to learn more to really dig into the details of this study, yeah. where can they go? The full study is published in Veterinary Sciences. It came out in September 2024. The title is A Morphometric Study on the Dimensions of the Vertebral Canal and Intervertebral Discs from TH1 to S1 in Cats and Their Relevance for Spinal Diseases. So a pretty thorough, deep dive into the feline spine. I learned a lot today, and I bet our listeners did too. It just goes to show there's always something new to discover about our animal companions. Absolutely. And the more we learn, the better we can care for them. Exactly. It's pretty amazing what we can learn when we take a closer look, isn't it? This deep dive has definitely given me a new appreciation for how complex and how elegant the feline spine really is. It really shows how much we still have to learn about our animal companions. Right. And how important it is to keep asking questions keep learning for sure to keep our cats happy and healthy absolutely so to wrap things up what's one final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with you know i think the biggest message is this when it comes to caring for our cats knowledge is power the more we understand about their anatomy their physiology even the little ways they communicate with us ah. the better we can advocate for them we can help them live long healthy happy lives I love that. It reminds me that even small discoveries, like mapping out a cat's spine, <laughs> makes a big difference in how we approach their care. Absolutely. This research is just one piece of a big puzzle. Who knows what other discoveries are out there waiting for us? I can't wait to find out. Yeah. From Vet Jar, keep those minds inspired, hearts light, and tails wagging. It's pretty amazing what we can learn when we take a closer look, isn't it? This deep dive has definitely given me a new appreciation for how complex and how elegant the feline spine really is. Yeah. It really shows how much we still have to learn about our animal companions, you know, even the ones we think we know so well. Right. And how important it is to keep asking questions, keep learning, to keep our cats happy and healthy. Absolutely. So to wrap things up, what's one final thought you'd like to leave our listeners with today? Oh, that's a good question. Hmm. I guess for me, it all comes back to how much we still don't know. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to discover, not just about cat spines, but about all aspects of their health and well-being. I agree. This research is just the tip of the iceberg, and it makes you wonder what other breakthroughs are out there waiting to be uncovered. It's exciting, and it's a reminder that every little discovery can have a big impact on how we care for our cats. Absolutely. It's like even something as seemingly simple as mapping out the dimensions of a cat's spine can lead to new insights and better care. Exactly. Well, I think we've covered a lot of ground today, from the nitty-gritty anatomy to the real-world implications for cat owners. Yeah, we've gone pretty deep. And I hope our listeners have learned something new and maybe even feel a little more empowered to advocate for their furry friends. That's what it's all about. Knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. So from Vet Neurojar, keep those minds inspired, hearts light, and tails wagging.